let me guess, you're either just starting to consider CO2 on your nano aquarium, or you're considering upgrading, but you don't want to spend a fortune. I have a great idea in a simple fix that is also cheap for you. Well, it could be a little bit more expensive for some of you as opposed to others. One of the big issues of CO2 on nano aquariums is when you set up CO2, usually it's this big bulky tank with a giant regulator and sometimes it would just look weird and it would stand out. Here's my marine land portrait tank. This is essentially a five gallon aquarium on its side. So it's a five gallon tall as opposed to being horizontal. And think about it. It would look crazy to have a big giant bulky tank with a big huge regulator on the side or sticking out the back of this thing. So obviously the theme of this tank is small because it's a small tank with small fish, so you want a small CO2 system. But first, let me tell you about the benefits of CO2 and what CO2 actually does. I think it's pretty fair to say that most people that are either just getting into CO2 or just getting into the hobby in general, think that CO2 actually grows the plants. CO2 is, I like to refer to it as like a steroid. If you're working out all the time and eating and getting the proper nutrition and everything else that you need, you're obviously going to be a little bit more muscular. But if you add the steroids to the mix, you're gonna get way bigger, way faster. And also, when you stop taking the steroid, the growth slows down drastically. If you set up CO2, that doesn't mean you don't have to feed your plants anymore. If anything, you're gonna have to feed them a little bit more, adding maybe a couple of more root tabs every month or every water change putting an extra squirt of Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green which I absolutely love to use, by the way, because of the pump, it makes those things super simple. Now let's go get to the CO2 kit upgrade stuff. So the things that you will need to do this, if you have your 95 gram Fluval CO2 kit, then you will need the regulator off the top that looks like this. You gotta make sure you have the 95 gram regulator, because if not, you have the 45 gram regulator, and it looks like this. And this is gonna become an issue, and you'll see that in a little bit. Other things you'll need will be the bubble counter and the diffuser and the air hose from your Fluval kit. You won't need the CO2 tank, so if you did go out and you did buy the 95 gram CO2 tank, I suggest you use that. You will also need some thread tape. This cost about $1.90, and then you're going to need this adapter. What this adapter does is it allows you to screw this onto a paintball tank. So this is a nine ounce paintball CO2 canister. So you'd screw this onto the top. We're not gonna do it super tight right now. And if you had the 45 gram piece, obviously this does not fit. So you will need the 95 gram piece, which fits just fine. So we're gonna start off with the adapter piece in the thread tape. I forgot to say that you're gonna need scissors as well. But, you're going to take this tape, you can get this tape at any hardware store, like Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Walmart probably even has it. And we're going to take some of this. It's really thin, but it is quite durable. You'll find that you can't really rip it. That's where the scissors are going to come in. You don't need a ton, maybe about an inch, inch and a half. And then once you have that, you want to lay it directly on the threading. And you just need to get it on to the threads. And what this is going to do, it's going to ensure a nice airtight seal. We're going to do the same process to the threads on the CO2 tank. Now that all our threads are taped, we can start putting things together. You're going to start with your adapter and your regulator. Just screw it on in. Next, we're going to take this piece right here and unscrew it. Just take this hose, slide it over the nipple like so. I think I'm actually going to thread tape this right here. So I got the thread tape on and it was almost double as wide as the threads here, but that's fine. I don't think we're going to see much of this anyways, as the point is to make something that's not so visible. Now you're going to take that piece that you screwed off and you're going to make sure you have it on the right direction. This bigger opening side goes towards the regulator all the way down to the threads and screw this on as tight as you can get it everything here you want to get as tight as you possibly can the next step here is attaching this to your co2 canister 
But before that, you want to make sure that this is closed, just so you don't have any accidents. So you're just going to want to turn it all the way. If you're looking at it like this, it will be clockwise. Now that we have a regulator with our hose on it and our adapter on it, we're going to screw it onto the CO2 tank. And now would be a great time to break out that toolkit that you bought off some kid at work a couple of weeks ago. But not before you tap that subscribe button. It's free. It will always be free. And if you want to see more videos of mine in the future, just tap the little bell icon next to it. And if you like this video, don't be afraid to tap the like button. It really helps out, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Now this connection from the CO2 tank to the adapter is arguably one of the more important connections. So we definitely want to make sure that this is tight. Setting the rest of this up is very basic. You're going to take your airline hose and you're going to plug it in to this top piece right here. I broke mine. This used to be a suction cup. Next step is you're going to want to attach your bubble counter. You're going to take these little things here, which are just like this metal one that we've seen right here. Same thing, but it's plastic. You're going to slide this over the hose like so. Don't need to go too far. And you're going to put it on to one of these. We're going to do the same thing to the hose that's coming out of the regulator. And we're going to attach that to the other nipple. If you wanted to, you could thread tape these as well. I probably should have, now that I'm thinking about it. Now as you see, we have the CO2 can with the adapter, with the regulator, hooked up to a bubble counter, hooked up to a diffuser. We have a full CO2 setup here, ready to go. If you're not sure if you have CO2 or not in your tank, this is what this little gauge is for. It tells you if you have CO2 or not. You want it to be a thousand or over. And if your tank is empty and you need to have it filled, most sporting goods stores will be able to do this for you, such as Dick's. But let's get this thing over to the aquarium. All right, if you haven't used one of these before, this piece right here, you unscrew and you fill this with water. About that much is fine. Screw it back in, but you want it on there nice and tight. And this suction cup makes it so you can stick it to the side of the aquarium, wherever you would like. So the diffuser comes with a suction cup and it's supposed to go down at the bottom of the tank, somewhere around here on the inside, right above the bottom. But if you had ran this before, you would know that this gets clogged with water and then you can't turn on the CO2, the bubbles won't come out. So you actually have to take this out of the aquarium every time you're done using it. So if you find something that you can maybe attach to this, such as a stone, maybe super glue it to it, it can sink down to the bottom of the aquarium and then you can easily pull it back out. It is nighttime and you do run your CO2 in the morning before you turn on your lights, but just for demonstration purposes, I have my aquascaping tweezers holding the diffuser down bubble counter stuck to the wall and CO2 is ready to go and all you need to do is just slowly turn this. So you're just going to want to dial this in until you start getting a few bubbles in here. You generally want to do a bubble a second or a bubble for every two seconds and you're going to have a bunch of little bubbles coming out like that. If they're big bubbles, that's not good. You want little bubbles and your first time using this stone, it's going to run big bubbles for a little while and you're going to run this setup for about an hour to two hours every morning before you turn on the lights. I would definitely start off slow. Too much CO2 in the water can actually be harmful to your fish and your shrimp. And you don't want to hurt those little guys. And when you run out of CO2, this gauge here will read zero. The little arrow here will point at the zero. And then it's super cheap to fill this. This is probably gonna cost two to three dollars to fill. And those 95 gram cartridges are like $20 a piece. So you can do the math there on what's more efficient. I'm probably not going to constantly keep it there. I'll probably put store it behind the tank and take it out every morning. I'm not sure, but it looks a lot better than a four pound tank, which is bigger than this aquarium. That's all I got for you guys today. Till next time, guys. Peace.